welcome into the Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star, and today we're going to be doing a thread up unboxing. <laughs> I say it that way because for the second time, I have had my thread up boxes delivered by a UPS driver who just threw them out in the rain and didn't bother knocking. If you saw my last thread up unboxing, um, I told the story then, and I'm telling the same story again. Um, we purchased two thread up boxes, uh, 30 pounds each. They didn't have the larger boxes available. And in fact, actually, um, thread ups had the denim rescue boxes marked as unavailable for a very long time. And when I saw that they finally had some in, even though they were only the 30 pounds, I like to get the 60s. Um, I went ahead and bought two just because I haven't seen them have any in stock in so long. So we ordered two, and um, Saturday at some point, the UPS driver in the middle of a rainstorm decided it would be a good idea to just throw them, you know, on the ground in the rain. There's a um, kind of a roof thing that comes out over our porch. He could have put it under that to protect them from the rain. He could have knocked on the door to let us know he was here and leaving our shit in the rain, but he didn't. He just threw him on the sidewalk and walked away. Um, the only reason I even knew they were there was because I poked my head out at one point to see if it was still raining to see if Keith and I were going to go for a walk. And there's two soaking wet. <laughs> you ever smelled and seen wet cardboard? Um, yeah, they're just sitting there. So yeah, this is like the second time. And I mean, I'm, what are you going to do? You can't complain to thread up because they have no control over the UPS drivers. And if they don't care about their job, and I'm not even sure if we get the same person all the time on the same route. Um, what I may do next time I order one of these is like actually leave like a huge note on my door that says UPS driver, please knock or something because they clearly don't have enough sense to not leave things in the rain or to knock on a door if it's raining to let you know it's there. I mean, there's two options here. Put it under the roof so it doesn't get wet or knock or both or have some common sense or give a shit about what you're doing, but they don't, they don't. I guarantee you, because it was raining, they just wanted to throw them up there as quick as they could and get rid of them. So we had two huge wet boxes again ugh, for the second time. So Keith brought all the jeans in and ran them through the dryer and got them dry, and they're all on a table next to me. Um, I tried not to look, but clearly they're on this table and I can see them. So I did my hardest, my best to not see the brands and really see what I have here. Um, but they're obviously on the table. So here they are. So I was originally going to do two separate unboxing videos, but now all the jeans are mixed together because they've been running to the dryer for three days now. So I'm just going to do the video in two parts and do an overall price prepare and overall count on what I have here. So if you haven't seen me do a thread up video before, I write at the top how much we paid, including shipping all in. And then I, as we go through the jeans, we will consider if they are money or bolo brands, bread and butter, or if they're poop. And then I'll keep track on this piece of paper and at the end I count up the bread and butter and the poop and divide that into what we paid to get the price per jeans because I don't list the poop ones I redonate. So I did pay 40 81 30 divided by two was each box individually. I added them all together already but I'm not a good mather, guys. I'm an English major. So like $40.65 per box. But we're going to do them all together. And I'm just going to get like an overall count. So in this video, I'll go through about 30 pairs. And then when I come back in the second video, we'll do whatever is left. 
and then we'll do the total count at the end of the second video. So you'll have to watch both if you want to get the total amount of um, good brands and bread and butter brands and what we paid per piece. Now, when we record this for taxes, it's, I always get this question every time I do a startup video. Um, what happens if later on you find out one was damaged or you couldn't list it? How do you recalculate? Well, we don't do that for our record keeping or tax purposes. Uh, we just record $81.30 as the cost of goods. Um, and then, as you know, a cost for the business. And then as they sell, there'll be profits. So the only reason I do the price per piece is to is really for these videos to give you guys an idea of um, how much we pay per pair of jeans going through thread up versus off the rack thrifting and so forth. All right, let's jump on in. Also, if I'm unfamiliar with the brand, um, I will set it aside and then we will go through and together on a screen share comp them and decide where to place them on my rating scale. Also, also, um, for me to call it poop, it has to really be poop. It has to be like a Walmart brand, totally ripped and blown out and unable to sell. Because we pay one price for everything in this box, I know we're going to get our money back with, uh, you know, the first couple of sales of really good brands or even just bread and butter. We're going to make our money back. And then anything above and beyond that is just icing on the cake or extra profits. So I don't judge these as harshly as I would jeans off the rack. If I was outsourcing a lot of these items or these brands, I would never, ever pick up or pay full price for it. The thrift or even half off or even a dollar. Some of these I would never source. But when we purchase... A whole lot for one price. I like to list as much as I can from that lot to get as much profit as I can. So while I may categorize some of these as bread and butter for the purpose of this video and then I'm going to actually list them, um, these aren't things I'm saying you should be sourcing. And I'll say that as we go through the brands. And the best example or a good example to start with is this: these Grace Easy Fit. I would never source these and I would never recommend anyone else do, but I'm going to list them and use keywords like embellished um, and get maybe beads, you know, get some really good, good shots of this embellishing. And um, I will list these. They're size 30 for about 20 bucks. So we'll count those as bread and butter because they're viable enough for me to list and I want to make as much profit as I can. These are looking like they don't have a brand. These are weird. These are fashion jeans. So these are as generic as generic can get. Let me show you. If you can see it. And then they look like they were supposed to have some kind of a belt. I'm going to put these in coop. But what I will tell you guys, if you get stuff like this in thread up boxes and you can cut a straight line and not ruin them and you're not me, you can always cut the legs off of them and turn them into denim cut off booty shorts and then you can still sell them for like 16 to 20 bucks. So, but we're going to call those poop. I may try to cut them off, but um, I'm, good. I'm not a good cutter. These are glow jeans. So these are, I mean, normally I would say these are poop. Don't even bother sourcing them. I used to get these for a dollar when I was first starting this brand. I would pick up glow for 99 cents um, just to get volume. And I was learning. I didn't know what I know now. These are size 13, but I'm going to go ahead and list them, and I'll probably put them up for like 18 bucks. Um, this isn't looking so good so far. Ooh, oh, we're looking better. <laughs> J Brand, this is a good brand. I pay five and six dollars for these at the thrifts all the time, and I flip them for 30 to 35. These are the skinny leg. J Brand usually has some kind of a name or at least the style and the tags for you. So 
So these are money, money, money. Money. All right. Rockstar, Old Navy. Solid bread and butter brand right there. Love Rockstar. Old Navy Rockstar. Jeez. All right. These are denim coacher kind of poop. But, well, I was going to say, but they're fancy and I could probably, but see this? Oh, wrong one. No depth perception on the camera. Sorry. See the button missing? I may still go ahead and list them. They're nice looking other than that. And just disclose that and show it in a picture and put them up for about 20. All right. Let's see what's next. Kato. Pupo. <laughs> El Pupo. Um, but these are like Capris or Bermuda shorts. So I'll probably list those for 18. This is Zara Trafilac. This is Zara. I know that some people swear by Zara. Um, I've never really done that well with it or had good luck with it. Maybe I came in at the end of its popularity. It's still a good bread and butter brand. I can get it to move for like 25 to 35, depending on the style and size. Um, but it's not like the end all be all bolo of jeans. But these are nice looking. They're ripped and distressed and they have raw hems. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put these in with bread and butter because I'm probably only going to get 25. Maybe 30 if I push it, but that's listing really high. Um, Forever 21. I'll list them. I'll categorize them as bread and butter. Don't recommend sourcing. So from what you've seen so far, um, the only ones I'd actually recommend picking up if you saw them at the thrift would be the J brand and the Old Navy, only if it was $2 or less. Um, Mossimo jeans, size 16. That's a good size. Um, I used to love to sell Mossimo. It's a Target brand. It has a loyal following. It is a solid bread and butter brand. A lot of folks who wear this that can't find what they, um, the styles that they like at the store anymore will go online and shop. I just can't find it for the right cost of goods. And that's the only way, only reason I don't sell that much Mossimo anymore. When I used to be able to pick it up for 99 cents or at the Benz, you know, by weight all day long. It's a good bread and butter brand, but I'm not going to pay more than a dollar for it because the prices you get it has a high, uh, fast turnover rate though. I need to drink water. So we've got some Wild Fable is a real poop brand. But this is cute. So I'm going to list it and see if I can get some money for it. Get this hair out of my face. All right. This is a brand. If these were jeans, I would probably not even list them. I would probably free donate but this is cute it's overalls skirt with like the frayed raw hem so i'll go ahead and list that i'm hoping maybe i can get 20 maybe all right levi's strauss so levi strauss is not you know as good as some of the other lines by levi's but these are bread and butter um these are 34 by 32 men's so they'll probably get listed for like 25 to 30, depending. I'll have to check some comps. All right. Arizona Jean Company. A MAC brand, but little denim shorts. Absolutely. I think I've talked that about that a lot on this channel. Um, these cutoff shorts, these denim shorts, these booty shorts, even the poop brands can sell for good money. And really fast. And like I said, you can always cut off jeans to make these yourself and sell them. Some brands, the jeans will get more money than the um, the jean shorts will get more money than the full-length jeans. This is the, je the fashion jeans brand, but I'm going to list them. Did you see how cute they were with all the rips? And these are another pair of Arizona jeans. 
these are all going to be considered bread and butter because these will all be like 16 to 20 dollars depending on brand size and style hair apostle size zero this used to be um these are really ripped this used to be one of my go-to bread and butter brands a lot of air apostle um jeans in fact most of them are smaller sizes and so they'll ship first class and um this, this is a mom jean too which is a good style and i used to get them for 99 cents i don't really do air apostle anymore because i'm not paying five dollars for something that sells for 18 to 20 even if it ships first class it's just not there's no room for profit when your cost of goods goes up so you got to kind of switch your way of thinking and then these two i used to love hollister because they're always real small sizes, which means they're going to ship first class and weigh less, it costs less to ship. Um, and these smaller sizes like this are just as good as the plus sizes because the women that wear these smaller sizes have a hard time finding clothes and so they'll shop online. So these are gonna be bread and butters. And these are YMI, which I usually tell people to avoid, unless it's the YMI want a better butt line. This is just YMI, but I will list them and I will count them as bread and butter. So, so far this box is not for these two boxes because I don't know what's what it's all mixed up. Not that exciting, is it? This has absolutely no tags on them. Like, no, oh, lies. Okay, so these are generic, as generic can be. They're clearly maternity, you can tell by the elastic stretch. Um, but I'm not going to bother with them because they're, they're poop. They don't even have a brand. They look like those things you order off Wish. <laughs> okay, these are Old Navy, The Dreamer. And I believe these are size another 12. I was gonna say I think these are plus size, but they're 12, so that's still bread and butter. That's fine. Okay, and then next we have Marona. I'm gonna list them though. You see my face, but I'm like, eh, gotta list everything I can to get as much profit out of this as we can, because this is not exciting. All right, we'll do this little pile right here. Oh, look what I see. A money brand. Yay. Hudson. So I usually list Hudson's for around 40. So that's a good brand. And uh, please Okay, I'm like, please have a brand. I see more maternities. I personally, I'm going to put these as bread and butter. Um, I don't go out of my way to source maternity clothes. I've never done that well with them. But when I receive them, and a lot, I will list them. And if I find maternity clothes in, like, really popular brands, obviously I'll pick it up. Denizen for Levi's. So these are like the really low end Levi's for like Walmart or whatever, but they're still Levi's. Um, and Levi's has a loyal following. I wouldn't source Denizen, but I will list them. So um, one of our balls from the dryer. You guys know about these? <laughs> Keith's grandma taught, um, convinced me that you need these. So you put them in the dryer and allegedly they make things dry more quickly and um, you create less static clean. We have four of them and they get stuck in clothing and I always clean them. <laughs> um, folding laundry or going through these. So these are um, Isabel maternity. And let's see. Old Navy Rockstar. 
And unfortunately, the size tag is missing. So we'll just list it with the measurements and disclose that the size is missing. But um, they are women's. You can tell by the pockets. So we'll call that bread and butter. James Jeans are money polo brand. So that's a good pair. Very small too. So these are going to ship first class. That's nice. Jessica Simpson. I mean, eh, poop. Low end bread and butter, maybe. But we always them. So we've got three monies so far. And 27 bread and butters and two poops. And um, I'll just do one more little pile and then we'll do the rest in the second video. Another pair of Hudson. These are gray denim. These are, yeah, these are size 27. These are nice. So these are money. I do well with Hudson's. Um, American Eagle. So that's bread and butter. I got another money brand right here. Adriana Goldschmidt. I usually list these for about 35 40 depending. These are the legging ankle. They're nice black jeans, real soft. So we'll get that. And then we've got, I've never heard of this. So maybe we'll do a little comping before I let you go on this part one. And Avenue jeans. I'm going to go out on a limb and say these are poop, but they are plus size. So I'm going to list them. Because they're plus size, even if they turn out to be like a real crap brand, still can probably get 20 at the very lowest. And then we're going to go ahead and comp these. And I will then um, be back with the rest in the next video. So let me share my screen with you. And make my seal real small. Okay. So let's go to um, eBay. And let's look for dip. Or is that an L? That might be an L. We'll try DLP. DLP jeans. My gut is telling me these are going to be poop because I'm not even seeing anything come up for this brand. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and call these poop. So we got three poops so far and 29 bread and butters and five monies so i will keep adding to that in part two of the video and we will see what we have at the end um kind of disappointed so far but i mean i did get five money brands so but i've had um boxes that were have been much better than this all right guys i'll see you in part two Please hit the thumbs up before you leave. It helps the channel so, so much. And subscribe if you haven't already. Join our Facebook group, Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. And until next time, go be productive. Go make some money. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Y'all are the best. Bye.